talk about Westworld. I. You ever seen this show Westworld on HBO? Yeah, I got. I seen about the first uh, two or three episodes. Were Fel- you able to make it through all the western parts? That's where I. That's where I <laughs> fell asleep. I fell asleep at the western part, so I don't know too much about the show. But you were telling me a little bit about it. I'd say this is gonna be full of spoilers because I don't want to. I don't know how to fucking talk about these things without giving you some of the things that I feel like are important parts of the show. Yeah, it's one of those shows where like you just you're gonna have to give it away, but <laughs> fuck it, man. They're just gonna have to uh, deal with it. Really, watch the show before you listen to the rest of this podcast. How about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to uh, couchtuner.eu. Get that shit for free. I ain't supporting no major company. Fuck HBO. Fuck. There's no such thing as intellectual property either, guys. I just want to let you know that. Until HBO gives us our own special, then we know. <laughs> we'll be like, yo, what's up, guys? Nah, even then, there's no such thing as intellectual property. You can't steal a song or a movie or a TV show from someone. It's you trying to trademark life. Like, think about it, though. If you, if you had an apple and I had an apple... If I was to steal your apple, you would have zero apples. I would have two apples. Now, if you had a song and I had a song and I, I'd steal your song, you still got a song and I still – like you, you could then yeah. steal my song. It's not yeah. that I'm actually literally taking physical property or something, whereas you're not able to have it yourself. It's just making a copy – so yeah. that I'm able to view it. I understand that it's taking money, maybe, or resources that normally you would have gotten if I would have had to have paid for it. Yeah. But you still have your subject, your commodity or whatever, is still in your possession to be able to sell to somebody else. Yeah, and, it, and it's art. If, you, if you're an artist, you can come up with something new anyway. That's, yeah. that's how I felt. I mean, I grew up fucking a little bit after Napster, the WinX, LimeWire, okay. FrostWire yeah. days. And that's how I found all the dopest shit. That's how I found all the music that I'm still into these days is because I was able to select the songs and listen to it without there being a paywall in between because that's definitely going to keep me from exploring further. I mean, I'm 13 years old. I'm mowing my grandma's grass for $20. I'm more worried about buying Yu-Gi-Oh cards than I am a fucking album at this point. Yeah, yeah. I I remember uh, with Napster, my dial-up speed was so, so low. That I had to like download songs at like, what was it a lower? Was it a hurt, sixty-four hurt? K- kilobytes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would get that they would sound like absolute shit. But I was like, yo, I got the record in like three seconds. I had all the Ja Rule records and all that shit. But it's like, I mean, just the point of that is that I always thought of if I'm ever gonna be an artist, I want my shit to be out there, however possible. I yeah, want every I person mean, to listen to it and get something from it. And, I mean, maybe this is why we have a lot of starving artists these days because a lot of people have the same mindset that they don't necessarily have to give the artists any kind of reciprocation for their craft. Whereas I try to take it as the more I'm obsessed with somebody, the more money I'm going to derive to give to this person. Yeah, I mean, I think the main guy that complained about it was the uh, dude, was it Lars from Metallica? Metallica. He was, like, the first guy to really start bitching. And the guy was fucking rich as fuck anyway. Like, what, like... You're living the dream, man. Like, I mean, I guess I can see in a way, but... I'd say it's almost like a new mindset versus an old mindset in the sense of, like, you're more worried about getting your money from record sales, from your record label, from all these other aspects, whereas I've seen this dude, Saul Williams, go the route of create his own website, offer it for free or for however much money you want to pay for. Like Nipsey. Like, uh, Bandcamp does this now as, like, a whole business model is you're able to, if you provide your email, then you'll be able to download the content for free sometimes if they get you to, if they give you the option the artist does. Yeah. But, um, they're able to eat on the food, like, able to eat on their, uh, craft that way, and then they don't have to, they're not, there's no middleman in between taking all this shit and saying, oh, here's, uh, 5% of your album sales getting here. Yeah, because, I mean, we don't even know if Lars owned his own masters, man. Like, I mean, he could And that's probably why he's extra salty, because yeah. there wasn't any uh, he, album sales, so he wasn't able to get anything, the yeah. tiny cut that he was supposed to get. That's probably definitely what it was. I mean, it's funny about Bandcamp. I think my friend got a four-cent ch- uh, four cent, uh. <laughs> four cent check from Bandcamp. He was like, you guys told me I can't eat off my music. <laughs> Which is funny. He's a talented person. He should have a lot more. I would say he should be making more of a 
living from his music. But that comes in time. I mean, people are eventually going to get fans. I mean, look at, you got, uh, I was about to say Young Yachty. It's better. It's probably 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 a better name for him. But yeah, little Yachty who's like blowing up. And I you don't, see him try to dunk the ball. Nah. Oh my God! This is the most unathletic person I've seen in my entire life. The hoop was raised to ten feet. He was doing some kind of uh, photo shoot or something. There's a bunch of people all around him. He's dribbling it up. He takes. He jumps from two feet. Doesn't even get anywhere near the rim or in, near the net. And still say, yeah. tries to dunk it down as if he's what? above the rim. I honestly believe that I, because they said Chief Keith, Chief Keith had slight autism. I, I think yeah. Uh, I was about to say Young Yachty. <laughs> young, that's his new name is Young Yachty. Yo, what, what the fuck? Anyway, I think he's. Autistic? I think he, yeah. You I'm got pretty some sure, Aspergers or something. I'm pretty. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And he, I mean, he's dressed as like a 13 year old black schoolgirl mm. with, with with red beads and braids in his yeah. hair. And I mean, I'll I'll give it he, he, very catchy though. I'm not gonna say he's not a talent. I mean, <laughs> uh, I wanna say he's completely not talented, but you know he has good harmonies. He has a good, uh, you know. You gotta bring the, balance. You ain't. I like this, this guy. Isn't just completely shitty. Obviously, he's got. I like the Sprite commercial. The Sprite commercial with LeBron. I think LeBron's in it. <laughs> nice tune, but you know, I, I feel like. I mean, me personally, I've moved from being into rap music for so long, being a DJ, being in the industry. I've kind of just moved to music without lyrics because it, it just, like, I don't feel like getting yelled at anymore when I listen to music. <laughs> yeah, so I, sometimes it feels preachy, but also, like, I feel like the more, I'm more of in a creative mindset where I want to make my own shit now. And if I'm listening to other people's lyrics, it's not giving me a chance to focus on my own thinking, my own ways of creating myself so if you got some good background music with some good tones and harmonies playing it plays back to what you said before like most artists that i know only listen to their own music but if they do they're stealing but they're not really stealing they're borrowing they're seeing what so like all my friends that make music all listen to jay obviously they all listen to drake but they listen to them to see why they're good at what they do and they take what they do that's good and they implement it themselves like you have, um, I mean, you could just see it. Like Nas is obvious. J Cole's obviously studied Nas his, like his whole life. I think he even said it's his favorite rapper. He had that song, "Let Nas Down." Nah, nah. Let the record be known. J Cole started on the Cannabis Central forums. He was a fucking cannabis fan, just like me. He was a ripper. Well, he's he. J Cole. That's that's the other thing. Drake and J Cole, probably the two best in the game right now. They're complete rap nerds. I mean, Drake bought. A Pusher T signed Mike on eBay, and now he's dissing Pusher T. <laughs> but I mean, but that's just because he's fucking amazing. Drake, I mean, some of the songs too sappy for me, but dude's fucking amazing. Uh, J Cole's amazing, but Drake is the new the new Jay Z. He emulates Jay Z better than anybody in the game. And J Cole, J Cole, I would say not just Nas. He's a little bit of Tupac in him, obviously. Mm, but, storytelling. Yeah, but and and and, and the struggle. Mm. Nas got that too, but you know, Nas dropped a lot of. Esoteric knowledge, though, too, if you really listen to a lot of the songs. Um, like the album with Davey and Marley? Or the, uh, I don't know if the name of the song is, if it's called Poison or What Goes Around Comes Around. He was dropping all that, all those jewels mm. real real early. Well, I want to kind of get into this whole presidential thing. Because I think there's very many layers to this. And uh, maybe go on a little rant right now and you can tell me how you feel about it. I think that it has been set up in such a way that everyone expected it to be Hillary Clinton, even though the vast majority of the population did not want it to be Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I remember reading articles saying that it was uh, the Bilderberg chose Hillary a long time ago, mm. so I was like, it's already set and done. Mm. Donald Trump's the fall guy. Exactly. Like it, it, it's, it was very clearly put in our faces that this this other candidate Donald Trump had no experience and he was just so vitriolic and hated by so many people that he was incompetent and wouldn't be able to do any of these things and you still see it now in the mainstream media all I ever all I ever come across is how his transition team isn't even reaching out to the Pentagon and he doesn't have any of any of the things that he should be doing like there's a Japanese ambassador or not even like the prime minister or whatever it is coming to 
New York and he doesn't even know where he's going to be meeting Trump at and he's coming tomorrow. So I, mean, I, I, the way I'm saying, feeling is that it gave us all almost a sense of inevitability that Hillary Clinton is going to be the new president. And then they kind of pulled one from under the rug from us and like, oh, wow, there's somebody that spouts some conspiracy theory that actually just made president. Yeah, he did a bunch of Alex Jones interviews. And so you rile up this other base that would never thought that it would ever be have their their opinions vocalized in a presidential um, race, let alone have it vindicated with a, a win. But also you see this theme of it's not over yet until the electoral college votes and december 19th is when the electoral college votes they're, they're still doing that I, didn't, they, I haven't paid attention they still are talking i would see it maybe once every two days now the washington post the new york times comes out with it's still not over yet the uh the it, petition it, site change.org has over four million um, signatures to get Hillary Clinton as president at this point. It makes me so even the media acting like they don't want Trump. I saw like hedge fund managers acting like they didn't want Trump. Like, how did he win if nobody really wanted him? Like, is it? It's not. And then if you go, it's not based on. It's obviously he didn't even win the popular vote. So what? I don't understand. Yeah, that's actually that's what surprised me because I if I was a betting man, I would have said. Trump's going to win the popular vote, That's and Hillary's going to win the Electoral College, yeah. and it's the complete reverse. But all right, peep this. If they are able to get Hillary Clinton elected president through the Electoral College, because basically in uh, about 26 states or so, the electoral candi- uh, the Electoral College is supposed to vote how the states vote. But if you were to choose not to do that, you would get a minor fine and it would be a misdemeanor. Nothing too serious against you if you were to vote against what your state voted. And they print money out of air, so nothing serious Well, I mean, you think about who are these – who are the people that would fund Hillary Clinton and would really appreciate an establishment candidate being – oh, not even that, a war hawking establishment candidate being in there. So – there's not even that many people in the electoral college that they need to swing over the other way. They'd pay all those fines real quick. They'd make sure the misdemeanors didn't affect these people's lives at all. And he had supposedly no supporters in government, Trump. Everybody was right, against right, him. yeah. There's a he lot of Republicans. Fought, he fought and, with all the Republicans. So there's also been this meme going through television, movies about civil war. Uh, uh, Cap- sides, Captain America. Captain Civil America. War. I mean, Purge, right? Yeah, I mean that was elect election one for this year. So, which is technically about a civil war, right? Mm, yeah. Um. So now we have the vast majority of liberals up in arms, fearful of what a Trump presidency might bring, getting tattoos saying Trump is not my fucking president. <laughs> And I can understand why people would be upset. I can't understand that tattoo, though. No, I can't understand actually tatting something like that on your body. I can understand the feeling behind it, though. And in now a, a now, way. if – this is all hypothetical. This is just something that I feel like would play out in a movie if there was some kind of evil powers behind the scenes trying to – Push us towards. It would make, yeah, yeah it's like push us towards uh, make America work. destroying itself, and not too many people helping us as far as other countries because they've seen all the destruction that we have caused elsewhere in the world. So now, hypothetically, December nineteenth happens. They make the votes. They don't even find out December twentieth. Guess when you find out? January sixth. Two I weeks. Mean, two weeks before. The president elect would actually get sworn into office, so you'd only have two weeks up until finding out when the president, you know, who the actual president would be. If this if this scenario plays out, it would be Hillary Clinton. There would be as much drama and protests and violence in the streets now. 
yeah. would probably double or triple in the sense that you're now you're going to have both sides face to face hating one another battling it out in the streets for the whole world to view and maybe maybe martial law gets enacted maybe we don't actually get another president maybe obama has to stay in as a you know a continuity of government measure could be i mean i wouldn't put it how else past how it. else do you think we could get into a global system if the world's leading superpower is crumbling underneath itself and needs needs help from from the whole world maybe the united nations comes into play and says hey you guys don't know what you're doing. What are you talking about? You you're gonna elect Trump, and now you're gonna elect Hillary Clinton, and now you're gonna have martial law, and um, Obama's gonna be an indefinite president. Maybe, maybe we should run things from now on. Maybe the United Nations, who just took over the um, safety protocols for the internet over from America, maybe they're like, hey, if we can take over the whole internet. Maybe we could just take over the whole world. At this point, I wouldn't put it past. I mean. If you just look at TV nowadays, all of this stuff. Did you they're see? Put, did they're you, putting. Did you see the World Series? No. Nah. Came down to Game Seven. Mm. Like extra innings. Mm. Did you see Stephen Curry in the NBA and how that shit plays out? Mm. Everything now is a fucking movie. Well, even Kevin Durant, who was one of the most loved players, became the most hated player. Yep. I mean, that's a that's a big switch right there. I mean, everything everything that's coming out right, nothing is normal anymore. Everything is like a movie, like everything is. So your the scenario you just said, I can see that playing out. I also saw I also saw an article that said there's a loophole with electoral college. Bernie Sanders can still get in. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what in the world, mm-hmm. man? What? So I, what you're saying, I feel like. There is a chance that could happen, and it makes perfect sense. I mean, even when Donald Trump won, the first words out of every single news porter's, uh, newscaster's uh, mouth was, nation divided, a nation divided, oh a nation divided, gosh. a nation divided. That's how they, they embedded that meme into our minds when we are most wanting to find out what's happening. Oh, my gosh, who won? Oh, they the said, nation they, they has said, been divided. They're, they're like, they're like uh, oh. We didn't know that there was people that felt like this in the country. They were just saying the dumbest things. And, like, and it, you gave us the two worst candidates of probably of all time. And then you expect people to not be mad. I mean, of course some people are going to take sides because if you give somebody two options, they're always going to take one fucking side of it. Most people aren't going to – I mean, a lot of people did say fuck that shit and not vote. But uh, 46.9% of the population. I saw but, a beautiful article that showed – only five states had enough of a voter turnout where it would have actually made that one of the candidates would have won. Whereas if you would have included the non-votes, nobody yeah. would be president. I, I saw that too. Yeah, it, 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 That's what I'm saying. So it's like Trump's not my president. None of them are my president would be my tattoo. But I wouldn't even get that tattoo because mm, fuck that. Mm-mm. But still, like what? I mean, I, I really don't know at this point. It's... It's, it's pretty and I want to I want to pre- uh, it's not a preface at this point, but I want to say that the scenario that I just painted in your mind, I do not want this to occur. I do not want there to be civil unrest. I do not want there to be separation or division. I would just like to at least put this out there for you all to consider so that you don't fall into this dialectic that has been foisted upon us i mean it's been happening for thousands of years they've been doing the same exact scenario over and over again but now we have hillary clinton and we have george soros funding the protesters to incite the violence you can look at the news articles that show the close to 70 to 80 percent of people being arrested at these protests are from a different state Tell me now, if you were super upset about something, are you going to drive a state over, two states Nobody over? Nobody would even go help the, the, help the, the pipeline situation. Nobody yeah. would even drive there, but they're driving there to go. I mean, come on. Look at the uh, – go on YouTube and look up all the videos showing in Chicago and Austin of countless Greyhound buses yep. that like wa- p- parked 
blocks and blocks down the street. What There wasn't a conference that day. The only thing that was going on were these protests. Now, I bet if this man, George Soros, wanted to give people $15 an hour to go to the North Dakota Standing Rock, best believe there would be a million plus people out there. But for some reason, it's almost as if Money is people's God, that that's the only thing they care about. That's the only way that they're actually going to put their physical body in harm for a situation is if you're going to give them money for it. Agreed. The fuck's with that? Agreed on that. I mean, I bet these people don't even have principles. The I would say probably 50 percent of the people protesting did not vote at all. Don't get me wrong. I yeah, didn't I, I vote. Saw, I, saw the, I didn't I saw vote. Article today, actually. I did not vote. I will not vote. I. I support cannabis. I will not vote for the legalization of cannabis. That, I do all not. That, all that does is get Monsanto money. Exactly. And it puts you on a list. And pharmaceutical companies. Because so, they got all the money to begin with. What makes you think that they wouldn't open up the fucking medical marijuana shops themselves? Don't be stupid. I mean, didn't I text you a article about Maine cracking down on its supply chain now? And uh, only big corporation would be able to do it. So any of the uh, the growers and the dispensaries who already have their name on lists would uh, they'd be checked first for uh, any um, issues. Besides, I mean, we, yeah, I mean, we know that. I mean, I, I think I think even Vice did a show about that. So if you watched Vice, you've even seen that. What about the stuff even where the uh, cigarello companies are owned by like what is it? Our governors or our. Uh, our uh, Politicians, I think, own own own, own our uh, the, the the blunt wrap companies, and then they outlaw piece glass pieces, so you can't be, be caught with a glass piece, but it's okay to be caught with the Cigarello company that they own, uh, one one of those blunts. So that just further makes people addicted to it, because now that tobacco is what you're going to be create cra- uh, craving. They have this all figured out because we're everybody's so goddamn so many f- steps behind. They're way ahead of everything. And it, people don't even know what to believe in anymore. But this is what I want to say real quick is that everybody needs to look around. Everybody needs to look around and realize we you probably – I mean, I'm from New York, so I know me. My whole block was multicultural. I mean, in, in you know, granted certain states are a little more segregated. But everybody, take a look around. You've probably been friends with people of all races. Stop with this nation divided shit. Realize that they're fucking, they want you to be divided. It's all they talk about. Just listen to every word out of their mouth. It's about nation divided, nation divided. We are friends with everybody from every race, man. Let's get, let, come on, stop the nonsense. The only thing that's divided is the fact that there are a group, several groups of people that greatly profit on us not being a real true community that if you depended on your neighbors and even just your family i don't even think that there's a real sense of family anymore for things like if i was in need for something it doesn't even really come to my mind to ask my parents or my grandparents because it's been drilled and instilled in our minds that we're on our own here you, you, your lot in life is only up to you, and you, if you ask for help, then you're actually a lesser person now because you're, you can't deal with what your issue is right now. They did an interview asking people from other countries what they thought about America, and the most thing that the, the like the one of the most popular things they said is that everybody in America is uh, greedy and they are in competition with one another. Nobody's mm. for each other. Mm. Which plays in how, like, me and Cody talk all the time about how we don't even, like, know our neighbors, really. Like, every, nobody's really that friendly anymore. Everybody's afraid to even just say hi to somebody. Just yesterday, a guy who was down out on his luck, probably around our age, I'm, um, I'm almost 26 now, going door to door, begging people to do labor around the house so that he can get some money to eat told me he had to eat in a day and a half i told my girlfriend about this and she was worried that he would try to do something to vandalize or steal from us or 
perhaps he was lying and he had eaten and maybe he just wanted to get over. He just wanted some money for a fix or something. And I see the sentiment and I've even felt it myself when being approached by somebody asking for money. But you really got to put yourself in that person's shoes. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he was living with his girlfriend, maybe cheated on her and then kicked him out. Whatever past indiscretion he had, in that moment, he was trying to do right. He was trying to work for some money so that he didn't have to do something that other people just kind of rely on as far as taking advantage of others. And he was he told me that he walked around for three hours and nobody would help him. And it really hurt me because I don't have any cash to, to give to this man. I asked my girlfriend if she had anything and you already heard her response. But I went through my house and the kitchen and anything, any leftovers that we didn't, we weren't going to be eating, any snacks and things that we truly didn't need, I offered to the man and he humbly accepted it he wasn't just upset that I didn't have any money for him and you know I told him that no matter what happened to get you to this point if you work in the now to just do the right thing you're gonna find yourself in a better spot you can go another five hours without anybody giving you an opportunity to work for them but I promise if you don't go and do the wrong thing and you don't hurt somebody or steal something from somebody the universe will take care of you you will be drawn to someone who has a decent amount of money that sees the plight that you're in that will take advantage that will take care of you it's what we do in the now did you see what isis is doing talking about the now and how they're destroying all of our ancient <laughs> burial sites I mean, ancient uh, archaeology, ancient sites in general. Yeah, I just read an article on BBC about um, ISIS. I mean, we can go a whole rant on ISIS as well. I'm sure we will. But just just talk about the ancient sites at this point. We don't we don't need to talk about who started it, all this type of shit. Just why are they destroying these places? Mm. I recall listening to a few interviews with people who have actually worked in Afghanistan and Iraq, archaeologists, not military people, not intelligence people, archaeologists. And they laid a, the history down of the past hundred years or so with Britain getting into Afghanistan and Iraq and trying to take over their resources and then America doing the same thing, creating civil unrest there, almost as if we were seeing here. And not wanting these people to place the importance on these ancient sites that probably have metaphysical capabilities that would enhance reality as we know it. So basically trying to dumb these people down in their own country to make them forget your own history yeah i would say we we've all been not taught our real histories not at all so i mean even even the area that i live in florida i don't know any of the sacred sites around here i don't visit them it's something that we could all look deeper into where are you at right now where are some mound sites where are some ley lines Try to find some of these areas yourself because they're probably not going to be put on a map. They don't want you to know where sacred rituals were done. We're facing the problem now where people don't even see the stars at night. I mean, there's so much light pollution. So while you're out exploring, try to get out where there's no light pollution and literally look at the stars and realize where we're at and what's going on i mean just looking up to the sky is incredible and just doing that can diminish if more people just did that it will diminish this anger this divide 
distress if to just take because this can all be wiped away a, a, a thousand foot tsunami mm. can come and destroy all of us and we would have wasted it on being angry at just the dumbest fucking things in the world I mean that's I mean we sleep inside we don't get any fresh air we lock our doors I was talking I had a conversation with my friend about how he never locked his door at all. And he was like, I wasn't taught to lock my door. I didn't care if people came in. Like, you know, not saying intruders, but he said, you know, in people in, in his neighborhood he lived in, people would just come in his house and uh, go in the kitchen. It was just a friendly community. And I was like, ah, man, no. Nah, you, well, I, was, I was in New York. You had to lock your stuff. I used to see people come in and try to steal stuff out of our backyard and gang fights and all this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if people started connecting to nature more, a lot of this stress, a lot of this their system being frazzled would just fucking stop. And they would realize, like, it's a gift to be where we're at right now. Completely agree with you, man. And with militant groups destroying ancient sites, it's like a metaphor for the current way of being thinking it's better than the past and that we can supersede what has been done in the past and conquer it that it doesn't mean anything we can reduce it to rubble like how arrogant do you have to be we only say that we're you know we're the evolved we uh our society right now is so advanced we have no clue on how advanced they were back in the day you know who are we to think that we're better than we really are did i say that right uh, I believe that the ancient Egyptians had podcasts. I mean, they're, uh, we know they had their emojis, hieroglyphs. I believe that the pyramids were actually Tesla coils. We've said, uh, we've said that, you know, these structures were like, oh, they looked like they were built out of stone and all this, like all this all this we got a bus going by right now kids just getting out of school probably gonna pick it up I would think anyway we think that because they have primitive like you know they built with stone and chisel and all that type of stuff no maybe they built that because they knew that would last if a goddamn tsunami came or something it would still be there all our stuff would fucking turn to rubble our wooden houses or our you know metal would be all rusted and leave a fridge out out uh, out in your backyard and just see what happens to it. See how it disintegrates. Well, uh, maybe we should get into Westworld now since we kind of talked about that shit about 30 minutes ago. Yeah. I think uh, you were telling me you only watched about a few episodes at this point. You were kind of bored. It's been more me antagonizing you to try to get you to watch this because I'm fucking infatuated with the ideas of it. To yeah, me, uh, not not to cut you off, but I, I would say the did. the concept though I I I think is dope. It's just that the western parts were like very slow and the loop that shit was going on. Yeah, and no, know, I feel you. I've I, never I, watched a western in my entire life because was, it's never. It was some nice me. nice titties in it though. Oh okay. Okay. But well, I mean, it's a it's a HBO show. Come on, they gotta they, throw a little sex they at just you. Just have to throw a titty in one per episode. Two percent. One <laughs> pair or just one or I don't know. It's got to be in there. Um, yeah, so if on, I was uh, to describe what Westworld was, it would be like the Truman Show meets AI meets The Matrix because it creates an entire world where these robots called hosts will enact – almost like a movie like you're living in a movie all these storylines and plots have been fabricated for real human beings called guests to enter this world mind you it is an actual physical place it's not a virtual reality world and you get to uh, play out your fantasies or go on side missions basically but there's this deeper aspect to the the show which 
the reason I've been pushing you to watch it is because of this maze and the ideas of consciousness and even the fact that we could be living amongst AI right now and not even realize it. So it, it's an actual, it's a, it's an actual world. It's not virtual reality. Cause I don't even think I got, got the part when they explain that. It's not really explicitly explained. They show, they show that it's a place where you have to ride a train in to get to town. Okay. Yeah. So, then in other parts of the show, it shows where the headquarters where you see the robots being made and the corporate offices is a part of this world. It's just in a very far spot that this is why you have to use a train to get there. Did it, did it say what year this is taking place? Has it hasn't said that yet? I don't think it uh, – ba- this is also based on a Michael Crichton book. You could probably find out everything you need to know about this if you want to search Michael Crichton. I don't know if it's called Westworld. Probably is, but wasn't there a movie called Westworld? It's probably even based on a movie as well. I'm I'm not quite I aware. There, I think I'm pretty sure that there is, but um, so we know that these these hosts have played different roles also too. Mm. And um, so I'm assuming there's probably other worlds in these than that that boring Western world. Actually. For thirty years, it's been just the Western world, just the just the uh, Wild West, which is cool. It's it's cool. So don't don't make me saying that it's boring is like complete. I mean, there was a lot of shootouts and stuff. I mean, it was it was probably them just being on the train every five minutes. That was kind of <laughs> like, eh. But go into more about Anthony Hopkins' character. He's more of like the architect, right? Mm. Like how in the Matrix is. So He's as the, the god of the world, yeah. As the story goes, there were two people that fun, or were created this the idea and shaped the park into what it became. One of the creators named Arnold apparently died within the world, which is supposed to be impossible. So that's where our, more of the the uh, esoteric things that keep coming into play later in the show center around this Arnold character but Anthony Hopkins plays the other creator of this world who is still creating storylines and and hosts which are robots and he has a very strained relationship with the 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 corporation that funds this all He's like a wild visionary that sees this as his world to do with as he pleases, whereas it kind of gets shown later on that the people running this are only interested in the technology, in the ability to map out human interaction and how you can simulate that into an AI so that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between how a human acts and how a robot acts and Anthony Hopkins at one point talks about consciousness being a burden and how all the pain and anguish the emotional feelings that we feel not just the actual physical feeling of pain but the heartache the loss of a loved one what have you that these things can be avoided if you just program AI to not recognize whatever it is that would cause this emotional trauma. So basically, I would say this is a subtle way of putting out there. That's what this transhumanist agenda is going to try to do. It's going to be like, oh, you're going to live in a fantasy world where you're not going to feel any pain and you're not going to be, you're just going to get to do, experience a, a wild adventure. But then they can control your every move and your every emotion and your every thought. Have you ever seen the movie um, The Giver on Netflix where they live in the the world where um, there's no color? Yeah, and they're medicated every day when they wake up. There's no knowledge. Yep, and there's no no pain really Mm. because he has to be given the, the memories of pain and war and – but 
at the end they that see that adds color to your life. Yep, pretty much. So I mean, the transhumanism thing is just I don't see why it's even really needed. I don't understand where because I follow a lot of hedge fund managers on you know on on my Twitter page and just in with conversations with people that got money and I just in, you know in the field of money I try to follow the money just to see because that's where you it's like following the bad guy in a movie you know that's where the answers are gonna usually lie and they're all for AI and I just really don't understand why the fuck it's really needed when we're already living in a, a crazy world that's like limitless to begin with I mean I guess that's maybe they think it's not, you know, maybe they think there's limitations so that they think AI is going to bring. I mean, why do you think that they're pushing this? I like to go with the Mark Passio school of thought about dark occultism when it comes to this type of transhumanist scenario, why the global elite would prefer to live in some kind of virtual reality. Are you familiar with natural law? Do no harm karma pretty much with uh the idea that the actions that you give out into the world will be given back to you pretty much that's is that that's one of the things with westworld where you're able to kill and kill and kill mm. right mm. that's what that's a great point you can you can rape if you would like to yeah. you can kill and, it's and you don't new the next but, day right? but um you do not feel the repercussions in this fantasy world you can shoot other people but when other people shoot you it does not affect you they cannot cause harm onto you you can only cause harm onto others so now if you think of it it's like living in a world where there is no natural law you can do whatever you please and nothing bad can ever happen to you so this is where my idea of transhumanism pushes into that the dark elite feel that they are trapped in a prison planet because they are also a party to the actions that they bring upon the planet but the reason that they are still able to be in power is because they trick other people to actually do the physical things to do the will to create the dark new world order which we are a part of at this point they have the military they have the police being the foot soldiers the ones taking the actions and then feeling the moral repercussions of it which still leads to they're already doing what i guess their goal of ai is like what else more do they want they want to be i mean we can't even get to the, I, I don't understand why is nobody i don't want to get crazy on here but why is nobody ever we got the DC sniper. Why isn't there the elite sniper? What the, what's going on? I mean, is it that they're that hard to get to? We see these nerds on these. Uh, what's the guy that that nerdy guy uh, that does the little journalism? He's always at the Bilderberg meetings. He gets up to him so easily. Luke Radowski. Yeah, that nerd guy. Oh, we are changed. Um, Don't give him a shout out. <laughs> nah, I guess we can. It doesn't matter. Whatever. I mean, he's he's out there actually flying New York, going to the United Nations, actually, like you said, getting He's doing it. the work. He's doing, he's doing the work. But I do agree, like, how is it that the people doing the most evil aren't feeling these repercussions? Because they're actually, they're not the ones doing the evil. They're the ones sparking the idea of it and telling other people that that's what they should do. They're only partaking in pizza parties. That's all they're really doing. They're reaping the benefits where most people are feeling the hardships. Because you got to think about it. What's the average military, the army, they don't make that much money. They come back. They, they're in a bad situation. What about the police? They don't make that much money. They're still stuck in a, the middle. the 40000 a year? Yeah, like they're, they're not making anything, yet they're doing all of these bad deeds. So to kind of get to the end goal is that if you can upload your consciousness into a Westworld type of scenario where you do not feel the natural law repercussions of your actions, then you don't have to experience hell. You don't have to die and then have your soul 
put to some place where you actually have to deal with all the things that you then set up in your entire life. Because I'm not trying to say that these evil people are getting off scot-free, but they would probably feel most of their punishment if you believe in um, reincarnation. You know, what if their soul next time gets reincarnated into somebody who's in Africa who has not even lived two years and has a distended stomach and only drinks water that is infested with parasites? So would you say then that the elite are the most afraid people on the planet? Without a doubt, in my mind... The people with the most money, with the most control, with the most power are the most afraid of losing it all. So that should be the main focal point of all of the movements right now is that these motherfuckers are afraid. We need to not be afraid and show that they're the cowards. And I think that will be a huge shift in consciousness. Because if you think about it, all the fear-mongering on the television, on most of these YouTube channels, even in some of the things that we said ourselves about thousand-foot tsunamis or global elite ruling things, like it can bring this sense of fear into our own minds and our own hearts. But if we realize that it's as if they're pushing that their insecurities upon us and how... I truly live a life where I'm mostly free. Like, yeah, we do have a lot of constraints upon us based on our own society. But when you're able to realize what's going on and change your actions, these motherfuckers do not control your mind anymore. You have the ability to know that this isn't, this material world isn't all there is. That. I mean, one of the greatest things I heard about the legalization of marijuana is has nothing to do with the actual fact of marijuana. It has to do with at least now adults can have the conscious decision on what they want to use to change their consciousness. It's no longer the government's fucking idea on what they want to do. So now it's like we've re re, re I don't I, I I pretty much don't smoke weed at all anymore though. So I'm not even. Gonna, but it's just saying that we we can now change our consciousness in the ways that we want and not have to potentially go to fucking jail for it or you know but herein lies the other thing is when anything becomes super popular normally it sucks so watch your back if you're smoking marijuana all day now because yeah, i'm telling you you're gonna be getting these super hybrid strands you're not gonna know what the fuck they do it where's the regulation on it we don't even know what how this shit is growing i mean my uncle smoked marijuana during the Reagan era and got completely fucked from it. So, I mean, just watch your back, people. Yeah, there's a lot of pesticides being shown in um, THC samples and what have you, and it's definitely something you have to be vigilant about. And this kind of is where I take my stance when it comes to anarchism because I feel like we're not self-sufficient. We're just hoping other people... We'll do the work for us and we just get to reap the benefits. Like, I'm not going to grow my own shit. I'm just going to buy it from somebody else does. But then you're at the mercy of that person. Maybe they're trying to cut costs and they'll use the pesticides instead of trying to go to a 100% organic method. And I think the way to, to combat, you know, being self-sufficient is realizing that we have life. It's a gift. Try to learn and do as much as you want. And then if you're not going to grow the tree, do something else that provides such beneficial, you know, a beneficial thing to this world so that you can maybe trade it for the, somebody that grows the trees. But you, it's a it's an equal trade off. One hundred percent. But um, kind of how you're talking about the, the benefit of the legalization is now we're now able to make the choice without the fear of going to jail about however we want to expand our consciousness when it comes to the cannabis plant. And we have the right. It's more of the, we have the right now, I mean, which we've always had the right. Yeah, People see, that's, that's, smoke, that's the, uh, the point that I was going to try to stress at is we 
have always had the inherent right to expand our consciousness however we see fit as long as it does not harm any other individual. They, I would say, though, from all the false propaganda they put out to begin with, they even took away the right. Just from propaganda alone, all the old people, not all the old people, you know, so many people. I remember when I was a kid, you would think that if you smoked weed, you'd hallucinate and fucking, you know, dragons would talk to you or some shit like that. But this is the crux of the issue in my idea, is, or my eyes, is that no one can take the right from you. The, the right, this is like a, this isn't something, you can't change something that's right into a wrong back into a right by people scribbling on pieces of paper at different ages, at different times. That as long as you are not stealing from somebody else, you're not hurting their body, which is stealing their ability to not be hurt. You're not – to, to have their own life be unimpeded upon. That, yes, they have totally tricked the past population with propaganda. But the inherent right to consume the cannabis plant has always been there. It has never been changed. It's just been – tricked out of people's minds that what is legal is what is moral yeah. when it used to be legal to have slaves it used to be legal to do so many harmful things to other people but it, you know as soon as it made illegal now everyone's gonna follow it like the fact that we should be placing what we do on what's legal and what's illegal is probably one of the most wrong things that's happening in this world. But that's the thing that the, the legalization of marijuana is going to help is that people are going to be able to, you know, see more clearly that what the fuck were you guys even, mm. how are you not thinking this way to begin with? I mean, I mean, a lot of it has to do from how they're raised, but they're raised this way because that's what fucking, you know, was placed upon them, you know, War on drugs. I mean, just everything. Coming from the practical point of view, seeing that where we are right now and how we do live in a world full of government and craziness, I completely agree with you. We have to take steps to get to the point where a lot of these ideas can foment into something real. And... The fact that people would be able to have access to a mind-expanding substance such as cannabis will greatly help us in that. Like, I plan to open a dispensary and and share all of these ideas with everybody that comes through. Whether or not they were ever on a consciousness tip, they're going to be more open to the ideas and might even be more interested in researching on their own after I spark a couple good ideas in their head after I spark a couple blunts with them because to me out of everybody that I've talked to the only only the people that I can truly get along with as far as getting my ideas out there seems to be people who have at least at some point in their life smoked because it's almost as if it's like a it's a gateway into a higher form of consciousness that's how it's a gateway drug I'd agree. I also think people abuse the fuck out of it, though. So I don't. Should I go on that rant? Yeah. I mean, I don't I mean. Do it. For example, the bud's very, very sticky, and I'm not saying it in a good way. That clogs up your lungs. It's everybody we, uh, everybody that my girlfriend knows in her ayahuasca circles, all the shamans, everybody. None of them smoke bud because they say it lowers your vibration. I mean. I know tons of people. I was just talking to a professional skateboarder who got depersonalization from it, and he's he's scared for his life. I mean, there's certain – even we could talk about how Terrence McKenna's method, who you love Terrence, about how he even said that it's abused. And he, you want to tell him that uh, you, you know about the ritual way that he said to use it, right? It's funny because as he would talk about this, he said that – he just loves the plant so much that he smokes it every day. So it's even funny that this is 
people who are aware of it still can't get past their own vices to experience the great benefits that you can have. He said that take take the amount that you would smoke in an, an entire month's time and do it in one session instead of spread out all the way through. So pretty much you would fast from the cannabis plant for a whole month and then have a a big consumption towards the end there. Use it like an use it like an actual medicine. Exactly, that you're not flooding your body with it at all times so that it becomes used to it. That gunk. Another thing is too that I I know this for a fact too cuz I know people that when they smoked every single day and then they couldn't get their weed, they went through withdrawal, they were pieces of shit because they didn't have it. I mean, people got to yeah, everything's pro marijuana right now, and everyone went, "Oh, everything that's all propaganda about it's bad." Yeah, the stuff that the propaganda was complete bullshit. But there is also, there. I mean, the famous saying is "everything in moderation," and nobody's doing this in moderation, man. People are fucking addicted to this shit. The fulcrum. We bring in the balance. You know, I smoke quite often, and now listening to some of these reasons, I'm gonna have to try to balance what I'm going to do. Like, am I going to knowingly continue to, to put my body through something that it doesn't necessarily need and I'm not going to actually get the most benefits from it? Or should I maybe stop for a little bit and, and bring some more balance to my life? It's like, you know, I have friends that love shrimp. You eat too much shrimp, it's going to be a lot of cholesterol. You know what I mean? So it's, it, 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 there's, and I, I I used to smoke. I remember there was at one point around from like 2010 to 2012. I mean, we used to smoke every single day. I mean, there was points, there was days, four or five blunts straight. I mean, and just having out of body experiences, hot hot boxing this. Uh, our friend Cam bought his porch. I mean, just taking you to a whole other fucking level. And I definitely did raise consciousness, but now the drug doesn't do much for me. I mean, and I've talked to tons of people that are like this. I've talked to other people that love it and they smoke it every day. But, you know, I'm just saying that I know people that smoke it and it didn't raise their consciousness. They're still stupid as fuck. You know what I mean? They, they, they still just sit there and play 2K all day and do nothing with their lives. You know what I mean? So, it, I mean, I just know that from proper nutrition-wise and everything like that, it's definitely being abused. It definitely does lower your vibration, and you know it's something that it's gonna need. To, it's gonna be. It's gonna start getting talked about soon because now with the way everybody's smoking so much, and I we don't even know what we're smoking nowadays too. I mean, so it's like you said, the fulcrum, man. It sounds like even though you did have two years of your life of constant smoking that. You didn't let that just be who you were, that in the in the full spectrum of your life, it does seem pretty balanced because now you, you've, you went from not smoking to smoking a lot to not smoking that much at all. You've seen all sides of it. Yeah, you, you get what you need. Like there's a, like one of the, the biggest things that kind of like pet peeve, I would say, is how people are like, I'm vegan. And like they put that in their biography and it's like every it's like. Not, I'm not gonna put anything in my biography that makes it seem like that's that's oh that's him oh he's the vegan guy like that's I don't want to be known as just this one thing you know what I mean we're limitless we can be anything so it's like when people get like these oh I need weed every single day well, what the fuck so now that's your crutch what if you know like, you need weed every every single day now I know your weakness you know what I mean now now you sound weak I mean it, it just it's people. I don't try to – my favorite book, one of my favorite books is How Not to Get Lost in Concepts. And I, I, it's, it basically says that, you know, you don't need necessarily anything to really – I mean, my other, my other famous saying is needing nothing attracts everything. And I just think that people with their neediness to, to certain things, especially with marijuana now, it's definitely hindering you for sure. Like people, oh, I can't I – can't, I can't function if I don't have my marijuana. That's not fucking cool. That's cool? So that sounds cool. I mean, I, I don't know about that. I mean, and, you know, it, it's kind of sad in a way. But, you know, I, I would, 
the more I come out with, you know, the negative aspects of it, people are going to be like, well, well, what the fuck? You know, people are going to talk shit. I smoke every single day of my life, and I'm perfectly fine, and I got a job, and I do this, and blah. Yeah, well, that's you. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's it's not for everybody. And so people got, there's got to be somebody talking about it at least. You know what I mean? There's got to be somebody talking from a conscious level that also did smoke too. You know what I mean? And I don't see that right now. You know, I see all this in myself. Like, right now I'm a little hard on money, so I'm not being able to purchase as often as I used to. So I've had to cut back on my habits. And it seems like if I go three or four days in a row without smoking, I'm a little bit more anxious. I'm a little bit more irritable. That I'm not appreciating life as it is. That I feel like there has to be some type of enhancement. And there shouldn't have to be some other filter for you to see life through to make things better. This isn't Instagram, guys. And it's not even living naturally. For example, say where, I mean, unless you were able to grow massive amounts to always have in nature, you might not even have it all the time. It might be a special ritual occasion that this plant grew. We were able to harvest it at this time. Now we can do it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's. It, that's the other thing that's how this world has become is like that's one of the reasons with, with girls when girls saying we don't need men no more because they can go get their steak at Publix whenever they want when back in the day a man had to go and fucking hunt his ass off to hopefully bring that home to feed the family you know what I mean and now it's instant gratification with everything and then people if they don't get their instant gratification oh oh man fucking life sucks life sucks but meanwhile Especially here in America, we're living better than, like, what is it, 90% of the world? And people still have means to complain about shit every single day. I mean, it's just low-key nuts.